In this video I will show you how to cover a box with fabric and make a very useful and pretty storage box. I will use special fabric for this, which is not very common. Cork fabric. It's the first time I use this material and I wanted to make an easy project to see how it behaves. What is cork fabric? A very thin layer of cork which is fused to a solid layer of fabric. The fusing agent is polyurethane. It's also painted gold, which gives the fabric a very nice sparkly look. The cork has natural cracks and small holes, which allow the gold layer to show. I am not using the fabric for garments, so I am not very interested in the actual material of the underlying fabric, but in my case this is cotton. I have seen cork fabrics that doesn't have the underlying layer of fabric. Fabric.com sells something like this. But the one I bought has. It's better in my opinion, since it, since it gives the material resistance and prevents tearing. To make things easier, I will use this cheap box bought in a dollar store. In my case, the original box is almost a cube. The height is slightly smaller than the width. But the width's lengths are equal, so the bottom is a square. This makes the process slightly easier, since we will have four equal panels for the sides. My material cut in the store was not perfectly straight, so I needed to draw a line perpendicular to the salvage. I had to discard a couple of inches at the edge. The selvage is quite white on this fabric. I mark the height of the box plus 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances parallel to the selvage, since the width of the fabric will accommodate all panels we need. In my case the height of the box was 8 inches, so I added 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances. The cork fabric doesn't fray, so 3 8 of an inch seam allowances will be good. I cut a long panel to cover all sides of my box. The length of this panel is equal 4 times the width of the box. In my case the width of the box was 9 inches, so times 4 will be 36 inches. I didn't need to add any seam allowances to this number. Later in the video I will show you why. I also cut one square piece for the bottom of the box. It was 9 by 9 inches, so I had to add 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances to that, because I will need to sew the bottom to the box. Therefore I had to cut a square with the length of 9 and 3 eighths of an inch. I wanted to embellish the cork fabric with some nice embroidery. This will certainly add a nice touch to the finished box, but I also wanted to see how this cork fabric behaves when embroidered. The design I wanted to use is large, so I needed a large hoop. I have carefully placed the fabric in the embroidery hoop, making sure the panel that will have the embroidery is centered in the hoop. I placed a layer of stabilizer in the hoop under the fabric and also put sticky back stabilizer on the wrong side of the cork fabric. Since the cork fabric may be destroyed by hooping and my cut panel didn't fit the hoop anyway, I secured the material to the stabilizer using an invisible tape. On top of the material I put a layer of water soluble clear stabilizer to protect the material. This is very similar to the steps for embroidering leather. In fact, the material resembles leather very much. This film has to be removed after the embroidery is done. Since I cut the material in one large piece, after I marked the panels, I have decided not to cut them, but instead just sew decorative stitches, along which we will later fold the material. There will be corners of our box. 
we will have three such stitches. It's a close zigzag stitch with 7 mm length. But when I made size stitches, I didn't sew them to the very end. I left 3 eighths of an inch unstitched, because later I will have to cut along these lines to be able to attach the bottom of the box. For the fourth edge, I have now only one line where the individual sides need to be sewn together. And I will use the same decorative zigzag stitch used in the previous step. The two pieces of fabric need to be kept together, but the fabric is quite thick and stiff. This now requires care, but it's not really difficult. I set the machine speed lower to allow better control of the fabric movement. But again, finish sewing 3 eighths of an inch before the end. We now have a tube with the four future corners clearly dividing the four sides and the embroidery in the center of one of the panels. I have noticed that the cork material makes the needle a little bit dirty and I had to clean it from time to time. Now we are going to sew the bottom panel. Base the bottom to the side panel using one the clips. You see that you have to connect the pieces right sides together. In the corners it has to look like this. Don't forget to match every corner with a decorative stitch. Next step is to stitch the bottom, which is not really very easy. I have started sewing on a straight line, and after I sewed all four corners in one long stitch, I came to the same point where I started. It should look like this in all four corners. With attention and patience, this doesn't really prove to be a hard task. Now let's prepare the lining for the inside of the box. There are also two pieces here, the bottom and the sides. And we will use the same technique, cutting a long panel for the sides and one square for the bottom. I will add seam allowances 5 eighths of an inch to the lining width and around 2 inches to the lining height. For the bottom I will add extra 2 inches on each side. The purpose of this will become clear shortly. In my case the box that I am covering with fabric already has a bottom panel pre-cut and I just need to drape the lining around this. I will use for this fabric glue.
Now I sew the sides of the lining together using a regular straight stitch and will end up with a continuous tube of lining that will be attached to the inside of the box. Then I press the lining, creating the four inside corners. One of them is a stitch. So, I have the four elements of the box. The outside made of cork fabric, the box itself as it came from the store, the bottom which is already draped and the lining tube. Let's put them together. I hope I measure it and cut well. Yes, the pieces fit. Let's finish the top row edge of the lining. This needs to be finished because it will be visible. The bottom edge will be hidden under the bottom carton and doesn't need to be finished. Now I need to attach the box from the dollar store to the cover I made from the cork fabric. I will use for this spray on glue. Part and stick temporary adhesive spray. It's very good for my purpose, which is attaching the outside layer to the inside of the box. Next step is to place inside and arrange the lining, making sure the budding at the top of the box has the same size, for beauty. I will place the bottom of the box inside, but for the moment it will not be permanently attached yet. I will use fabric glue to glue the top of the lining to the box. The glue gives me a couple of seconds to work, but I need to glue each side separately to avoid the glue drying. After finishing with the top edge, I glued the bottom, making sure the lining has no creases and any excess is under the bottom.
And now comes my favorite part. Enjoy the finished box. Don't you have a feeling of satisfaction when you create something useful and beautiful? I hope this tutorial was as useful to you as it was to me. I now have enough confidence to take on more complex projects with the cork fabric. Thank you for watching. That's all for now. If you like this tutorial, share the video and leave a comment. I will be really grateful for this.